So tell me when you fell in love with music. Hmm. As early as I can remember, probably my Fisher Price um, <laughs> record player. I used to actually put my Barbies on it and mm -hmm. kind of use it as a merry-go-round. But um, yeah, I've always I used to sneak and watch MTV because I wasn't allowed to watch it because it had adult content or whatever. But mm -hmm. I didn't care about the videos. I just wanted to hear the music. <laughs> um, what was your favorite music video? <laughs> Michael Jackson Thriller. <laughs> I feel like that's everybody's. Mine is Remember the Time. Oh yeah, tell me when you first started writing music. Hmm. Well, I would say I started writing as a teenager, not necessarily in the form of songs, more so in the form of poetry. And then when I was about 19, I met a producer and, you know, I, I was like, oh, I can sing and, you know, he was like, well, let's, you know, try to do something together. And that's when I started kind of transitioning poetry into um, lyrics. Mm -hmm. so. What was your first piece about? Oh, um, <laughs> usually something relationship related. I'm sure it was a love song. I still have a binder full of stuff that I wrote in like 1998. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your biggest music inspiration? It's really tough. I have I have two. It's kind of a toss up between Mariah Carey and Beyonce, for God. different reasons. Beyonce, I love her strength, her work ethic. She's just amazing. No matter to be who she is and and have such a private life is just amazing to me. Um, Mariah Carey, her writing skills always blew me away. Like the she expanded my vocabulary because I'd have to be like. Patriarch? What does that mean? You know, I gotta look this up because I'm singing it. So I've always been a huge Mariah fan. The fact that she writes and arranges her own music is important to me. So I'd say those would be my my two. But I've got I've got a long list, but those are my main ones. Yes, tell me about your indie artist list. <laughs> okay, so more recently I absolutely have a thing for Abel Teste, who is also known as The Weeknd. Mm -hmm. Love him, especially his earlier works. Kiss Land, you know, Trilogy, that whole era. Uh, Banks, love Banks. Mm -hmm. She has kind of this witchy, dark vibe about her. Very mysterious. Mm -hmm. um, FKA Twigs, same type of really edgy, erratic drum beats. You just never know what to expect from her. Um, and then there's Alina Baraz, who sounds like an angel. Mm -hmm. Never heard her. You need to look her up. Okay. So those are... Yeah, and I don't even know what category to put them in. As a matter of fact, I don't know what to put category to put myself in. It's just kind of dreamy and mm -hmm. really chill, but I don't know. It just kind of takes you to another place, and I like that. Mm. Tell me about your son. My son is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we discovered, well, first of all, he is my producer. He produces all my beats for me, which is pretty amazing since he's only 14. Um, Tell me about the first time you found out he could do it. It's crazy. He was 12 years old, and we were at my best friend's house who just happens to have home studio equipment. And she was messing around with it, and then through us being there a lot, he started messing around with it. And we didn't really think much of it because he would always have his headphones on, so we didn't know what he was doing. We thought he was just playing around. Mm -hmm. And then one day he goes, hey, guys, listen to this. And we're <laughs> like... You made that? <laughs> and then it just kind of, he just kept getting better and better. And he just, it's crazy because he's the kind of kid that's never really had a love or stuck with anything for very long. Even basketball. Mm -hmm. He used to play basketball, but he never really quite latched onto it. And this is something like, as soon as he gets home, this is what he's doing the whole day. So. Mm -hmm. Talk to me what it's like working with him and having, you know, your content and having him be so young. Um, it's interesting because I had an opportunity to make some music with a couple of my friends a couple of years ago, and that was tough for me at first because, again, I wasn't really the main person. We were kind of a group, so mm -hmm. I just kind of fell in line with what was going on, and sometimes the content was a little bit more explicit than what I wanted him to be, you know, <laughs> exposed to at the time. Yeah. But I would say now that him and I are working together, I don't really... I don't even know that I have any words with cuss words or any songs with cuss words in them. Um, 
I feel like just naturally the way I write is kind of tasteful because mm-hmm. I don't feel the need to, you know, just put everything out there like that. So right. I, it seems it just flows. It's just natural. Tell me about, what was the song you just did, Doctor? Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> doctor is really special because what happened was he made a beat like he does and he sent it to me like he does and he calls me up, hey, I just sent you a beat. Okay, cool. I'll listen to it on the way home. So I listen to it. I, d- I get a lot of my lyrics and ideas when I'm driving. Not that I'm going to you know write as I'm driving, just right. I- mentally. And so I get home and I'm like, oh man, I love this beat. I have something that I'm going to record. But I don't do it till the next morning while he's at school. I go downstairs to the studio to record my part and realize he's already got something recorded on there. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, because he's kind of... He's very talented as a singer, too. He's just shy. I was like, well, if he's going to work on something, I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'll let him have it. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. I realized that the melody and the lyrics that I came up with went perfectly with what he already had recorded. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to mess around and kind of record my part maybe as backgrounds to what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And when we played it back, it just meshed perfectly. And I it's crazy. Because he didn't know my concept for the song, and I didn't know his. It just came together that way. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's just destined. It's meant to have Seems your baby be able to do that for you. Seems that way. What are your plans for 2017? For 2017, most definitely to get the full album out. Um, I released an EP on my birthday last year on March 13th, so mm-hmm. I don't have a solid release date, but definitely by my birthday this year, again, we want to have the album out and start getting some visuals, some videos, um, hopefully start doing a little bit of traveling and performing and start working on some stuff for my son for his solo project. That's so awesome. Pivotal moments. What are some of your life-changing moments? You mean as far as music? Anything. Oh, um, <laughs> that's a hard question. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. Can we come back to that question? <laughs> okay, look, let's tailor it to music then. What was that defining moment to make you say, this is what I'm supposed to do? Okay. Um, definitely the fact that my son just naturally knows how to make music. Not only does he know how to make music, he makes the exact type of music that I can just write to within an instant Mm -hmm. and just the way that it flows so naturally together. There's no way on earth that God would have blessed us with that gift for no reason. So tell me about what your aspirations are. Where do you see yourself in five, 10 years? In five, 10 years? I would love to just be a recording artist and traveling and performing for people for a living. And I'm a hairstylist, makeup artist right now, which I love, but definitely music is my first love. And if I could just every day be doing that, that would make me happy. So I don't necessarily have to be like the next Beyonce, but (laughs) I would love to, for this to be my career within the next five years. So you want to be Serenity, a household name. Exactly. There you go. (laughs) Mottos that you live by? Mottos. Oh, um, there's a lot of them. I believe in the law of attraction. I believe you get what you give. I believe in karma. Um, What starts in chaos ends in chaos. You know, just, you know, do treat others the way you want to be treated. They're all kind of the same. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to work hard for the things that you want. Basically, just be a good person. And if you work hard and believe in yourself, you'll get there. Awesome. Little known facts. About me? Yeah, about you. That people don't know? or Yeah, that most people don't know. <laughs> there's there's a silly one that most people think is weird. I have to have ice in my cereal, in my milk. I love it. Also, I'm, I'm kind of a big kid in some ways. I like butterflies, rainbows, unicorns, My Little Pony, Care Bears, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Uh, pizza is my favorite food. Who doesn't love pizza? Some people don't, and I don't Who understand. Who are them. these people? Uh, They're not know. real. <laughs> they are unreal beings. When you leave this earth, what do you want people to say? Hmm. Wow, that's another hard question. I would, I would love for people to feel like my music 
or just my being or my friendship. I would love to feel like I touched their lives in some way, even if I didn't know them personally, mm -hmm. that I helped maybe help them through a hard situation or just made them feel better that day. So basically that's it. Awesome. Closing remarks. Um, I don't know. Everyone just love yourself. Don't let anyone dim your sparkle and remember the things that you're passionate about are your calling. That's what you're supposed to do.